so we're talking to Dr. Ian O'Byrne at the College of Charleston. And tell us very briefly your experience in higher ed and what tips you have for us in teaching. Um, so first of all, Peggy, thank you for having me on. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to once again hang out with you. Um, and I really appreciate the, the work that you're doing and the way that you're pushing boundaries, okay. especially with these different medium. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. So, I mean, so thinking about, um, yeah, I spent a little bit of time teaching eighth grade, taught a little bit in high school. Uh, I've been teaching in higher ed for, I would say, probably like eight or nine years now. Okay. Um, and so in terms of like, it, it's interesting because the first thing that's on top of my head right now is yesterday and the day before, the last two days, I was at a, a, a training on a program that we have here at CFC called the first year experience. And so we spent a lot of time trying to connect to the, the typical, you know, freshman, sophomore student in higher ed. Um, and they talked about, you know, what Gen Z is like and the baby boomers are like and, you know, how people like to learn and what, why are students showing up? Um, and to me, there was a lot of the same language and the same thought process that we had when, when I was thinking about my eighth graders and my high school students, you know, 15 odd years ago. Um, and I think that, um, you know, a lot of the things that we see are still the same. We see students that want to, they want personalized learning. They want to be, uh, involved and excited. Um, they want to be one of the quotes that came up in the in the trainings over the last couple of days was that students were were said to you know student quotes indicated that they liked a lot of classes that they were entertained hmm. okay and I and I and I know that a lot of us will listen to that word and uh, be a little bit upset about that choice of word um, you know but I, I think that you know what it speaks to is that there is you know, that they want the faculty member, the instructor, the, the, the educator to, to, you know, bring them into instruction, find their point of entry and make it more meaningful. Um, so, I mean, w with teaching, I think that it, it needs to, you know, we need to find the student interest. We need to, uh, you know, involve them in the activity. I think that uh, learners are active learners at any age. I think that they want to be involved. I think that we need to keep things moving, especially in higher ed. Um, you know, we see classes that are anywhere from 50 minutes to three hours long. Um, my belief, and I think that there's some anecdotal evidence behind this, I think that we need to, I try to keep my class to like 25, 30 minute chunks of time and, and keep things moving and if you have a lecture, lecture for 20, 25 minutes, and then move on to some group work, and then move on to some large group discussion, and then move on and keep moving things around to keep them interested. Um, and it's the same thing that I saw when I was teaching eighth grade in, in high school. It, you bring out all the bells and whistles. You know, I try and integrate technology. I try to have um, different groupings of students. I'll pull in YouTube videos, um, but I, I don't really see any difference there. So I think teaching and learning in, in higher ed, it's, it's a lot of the, the same things that we know about good teaching and learning. I love that you're drawing on your past experience in K-12 and kind of bringing those um, eternal ideas into your experience now. And to build on what you're saying about what you're trying, I'm also trying to do a lot of mobile learning. Mm -hmm. Some of this is just based on, I mean, obviously, you know, you and I and others read the Pew data on millennials and that they're very mobile driven, but a lot of my students just tell me anecdotally, they're so busy, they're doing their reading and writing and Blackboard on their phones. And so my primary consideration these days is how can this be mobile driven? I think learning on the phone is great or a tablet. Well, and it's interesting because I, there's this common uh, narrative, I guess, this common discussion point that comes up that, well, these kids are all different, you know, and these kids are digital natives and they're wired differently. And we know through the research, a lot of the, the researchers we know personally that the digital natives debate is, is hogwash. It does not exist at all. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and in this workshop that I went to, um, you know, the, the topic turned to how do we engage learners? And they talked about all the different reasons why learners may or may not want to engage and mobile devices came up and they said, you know, we sit here, we try to, um, you know, get our students involved and they're on the devices and they're not listening. Mm -hmm. And I went over to a student's desk and I waited and, you know, the student was on texting and even when they saw me and looked up, they didn't care that they just kept going. Um, and so the, a lot of my colleagues sat there and they were saying, you know, uh, I, 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 you know I, I don't let them use devices in my classroom or I've had them put the device on the corner of the desk or when they come in, I had them put it on my desk and if I see a text message, I read it, um, and, you know, or I, I'll, I'll hand out a box in the classroom and have them put their mobile devices in the box. And I said, uh, and I was listening to it for a while and, and I'm not the right person to answer that question because that rubs me the wrong way. This is stuff that we were trying to deal with 15 odd years ago, but it was T9 on a, on a Motorola Razor. Um, and, and I said, do you realize that this is a Simpsons episode? Like there's a Simpsons clip where Miss Crabapple pulls out the box, you know, with the frogs and says, put all of your calculators and cell phones into the box. Um, we, Teaching and learning should change because of technology. Pedagogy should change because of technology. We need to figure out ways to involve our students. Um, and, and just saying this blanket, um, you know, no technology and no mobile devices in the classroom doesn't really fit. Um, so I think there's got to there's got to be a better way. There's a need to sort of re-examine our role with these devices. But then at the same time. You know, I, 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 I try to push the boundaries with tech in my classroom, and I've suggested to students that I use different tools like Snapchat. You know, I use everything. And, you know, I, to one class last year, I said, well, hey, I, I might use Snapchat for my upcoming semester to do like a weekly, this is our essential question or our focus. And, you know, I asked two different classes, about 50 students total, if I should use Snapchat. And for the most part, the response was negative. You know, 50% of the students out of all of the group said, okay, I understand what you're trying to get at. We understand why you're trying to do it. And if anybody's going to do it, you're going to do it. Um, but honestly, we don't want one more thing to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to pay attention to more. Um, we don't want you in that part. Um, and a lot of students don't use those devices. So uh, I, I think... You know, we have this mind, you know, on one level, we have this, we're trying to figure out how to use these devices and how to change teaching and learning and adapt, and we need to do a better job. And on the other hand, we, we think we know what the students want and need, and we think they're wired differently and they're vastly different, but they might not be. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we have to make sense of. Mm -hmm. I love all those ideas. Yes, it's a constant uh, making sense and not making assumptions. So I love it. Just getting to know where your students are at and even surveying them to see what they think about what you're going to try. So how do you integrate mobile into your work, into your classrooms? Well, I kind of, I kind of building on what you were saying about students not wanting one more thing. I'm really trying to funnel all of my resources into the Blackboard LMS learning mm -hmm. system. Because when I had a colleague and I implemented Edmodo, students posted and did, dis did discussions on Edmodo. And even though Edmodo had a mobile app, students didn't want to go to one more source. They wanted to just have everything in one hub. And so yep. I use the Blackboard app quite a bit. Um, and I have students make podcasts, their own podcasts on using mobile devices. And I'm encouraging them to try some different instructional um, pedagogies for their own elementary teaching. I'm, I focus on elementary education within literacy. So getting them to think about mobile tools as a pedagogical device in their own. About yeah. So. I've noticed that too. Like I tried to, I'll use wiki spaces and then I use like hangouts for texting and I'll use all these different devices and spaces. And then this last semester I had a couple students that and I don't use our, our in-house learning management system. It's like a desire to learn mock-up. And I'm like, I, I have all these other things that I want to use. But then students came back and said, it's too much. Like, we're confused. We wish we had one hub to go to and this very cookie-cutter 
I want to see this, 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 that's what I need to attend to. Um, and, and I don't know why, maybe it's the, a, a lack of digital literacies and skills. Maybe it's that they're overwhelmed. I think it's uh, maybe it's yeah. personalities. Like they want to see, you know, I have to do this, 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 and I want to know what I have to do next week. Um, you know, and, and some of our, our higher ed students, you know, are struggling or drowning under expectations so it might be all those factors yeah i think you're right and i think especially just wanting one sequence of steps for what to do and what to know um helps them so that's what i'm looking mm -hmm. online just keep a simple structured one-stop shop even if you have links that go out just have it centralized in the learning management system and, and in a way like i hate that like <laughs> Like, I hate it. It's not, and my, my thought process is, and this is like a, a, a crisis that I'm going through right now. Like, you know, I took a course on how to build in, in that learning management system and I, and I'm listening to my students and part of me, you know, same thing I do with educators. I want them to use tools that they'll be able to use in their classroom. They're not going to have access to, you know, these learning management systems right. that we have them use. So I know why I have them do other things, but for some of them, it doesn't work. Yeah. So that's the crisis I'm going through. Yeah, you want to nudge them really hard. And I think I'm pretty hard on my student, for lack of a better word, sort of pushing them really hard to use technology yeah. because I feel so strongly about it. Um, but yeah, I know that tension you're talking about. You know, and most times, even past, uh, my my response would be like, you know, I I know what you need. I'm gonna to, to push you or force you so that you can do better. But um, you know, may, maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe that you know, maybe I, I need to think more about their needs and just give them the cookie cutter yeah. to get them through those courses. Like, what are my learning objectives, and just stay true to those. It's a dilemma, and even when I have things clearly labeled as required and I have things labeled as optional that can still be overwhelming to students so sometimes maybe maybe having a separate space for the mm -hmm. beyond for them yeah I agree so, well, good. I think we'll wrap it up here um, if that's okay with you but I really most definitely yeah, I think we're cutting out a little too so I really appreciate all your ideas and can, how can students or how can faculty or anyone get a hold of you to follow what you do online? So the best place to find me is I'm on Twitter. I'm at uh, W I O B Y R N E. Uh, and I have a website um, that has all my blog posts. Um, and I share most of the things that I do. I have a, a pretty regular weekly newsletter uh, that I have to do after this. And then I do like an infrequent podcast um, and then more stuff on the way, but I pretty much share all that through Twitter and through my newsletter. Yeah. And we're works in progress. So we'll look for your future stuff. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I'll put your stuff in the comment box below. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Thank you.